Francine, believe it or not. Chapter 1. Over here, Francine! Arthur was calling for a pass in the middle of the straight hockey game. He and, Fran he and Francine were one, t one a on a team when Muffy, Buster, Sir Allen, and the Brain. The other team led by Binky, including Molly, Kiefer, Mona, Speedy, and Reddles. Francine didn't seem to hear Arthur's call. Sit back, Molly, to the left. Toot took two long strike and fire at the goal. Let Rattle was the opposite goalie. He tried to block the puck and miss. Score! cried Francine. Binky controlled the face off and bright the, bright the puck back in, into play. He skated past Buster, but Francine pokes checks the puck between his legs. Buster raced down the sideline. I'm free, Francine! I'm free, he shouted. My butt, Francine, paid no attention. Instead of making the long open pass to Buster, she swap around Kiefer and come in her hard on Reddles, firing another shoot. This one bounced off the post. The puck recorder backed to Arthur. He did it, getting ready to move. Then Francine sold it away. She moved quickly in quickly and score hey arthur shout i'm on your team you were taking too long sis she told him do you want to win or not i mean look we're doing great now the score tied three to three who's me says muffy nobody but you nobody but you gets to anything francine shrug as far as he was control control Concrete. There was nothing wrong with that. During the timeouts, the team huddled to distance straight. Don't you don't you think we we couldn't show a little more teamwork? Asked the brain. I agree, says Francie. You do, says Arthur. Absolutely. You guys are not getting me the puck fast enough. I don't think that's what the brain means, says Arthur. Hey, think the team is top dot. Francine remind them. I'm, gl I'm glad to give you the pocket everybody wants to lose. Arthur and the others look shocked. Francine, Fransky, says Muff Muffy. I think you're the rudest person I've ever met. Francine shrug. I guess the truth hurts. Muffy look ready to explode. Everyone got back into the po poncer chines for the face stuff. A little later, Muffy got a pass right near the goal. Shoot! Shoot! cried Arthur. No, says Francine. Pass it, pass it to me. Muffy hissed. She, she looked down at the puck and then up at Francine, shaking her hands. She swung back her stick to shoot, and Molly stole the puck. She piped or poofed around and took three long straights through the opposing gold. Then she slapped a shoot into the net just as she, just as the whistle blew. Score, says Pinky. We win four to three. Francine threw her stick down on the ground. I can't believe it. He, we were so close. She turned to Arthur. I hope you're happy, Mr. Fairness. Me, says Arthur. What did I do? Francis snorted. You told Muffy you told Muffy to shoot. You know what a bad shoot she is. Muffy turned around a sharp soon so no one could see her face. Then she slowly skated away. Wait, we're just lucky in there's another play of game next week, says Francis. She looked around. Where's Muffy go? I think she's hard enough, says Arthur. So heavy, says Buster. The rest of the team walking away, leaving Francine standing alone. Chapter 2 When Francine took a moment to think about it, she didn't sense that something was bothering her friends. Muffy had seemed more than a little upset, and everyone else had been a bit grumpy too. I know it bothers them that we lost, she thought, but they have to stay that. They need to be more like me. Still, Muffy was to her best friend, and Francine didn't want to want her to snuffer in slice. So, she got on her bike and raced after Muffy. Wait up, Francine called out. Muffy was walking along, along as, at a fast clip. 
and she didn't slow down at the sound of Francine's voice. Did you hear me? asked Francine, coming up beside her. Muffy kept on walking. Yes, I heard you, she says, but you didn't stop. Why should I? asked Muffy, when I slowed him down a bit. I can't imagine what you're going to say. I'm sure there's something all wrong with the way I walk. Too big or straight? Or too little? Or maybe my walking too is too hopeless for information? Perhaps you think it wouldn't be better if I stop stopping walking all together and let you to my walking for me. Francine breaks to a stop. You can't fool me, Muffy. You're mad about something. Muffy stopped too. She stared, stared hard at Francine. Mad? Why should I mad? I why should I be mad? Oh yes, now I remember. You said I cost us the game. Well, didn't you? Muffy walked up to Francine, nose to nose. Whenever, whatever, I didn't, I did, or I didn't. There's no way to talk. We're supposed to be a team, remember? Honestly, Francine, sometimes you like a no step. Insult mission. What? Francine was sure. How can you say that? I'm one of the nicely people in the whole school. You think so? Muffy snapped. Then prove it. I'll bet you're you, this Princess Peach, watch that you're wrong. Friend Muffy held out her arms. This is the delicious model, of course, with the compact net, net stopwatch and old mail. Friends inside. You know I've won to want on of those watch from the first moment I saw them on TV. True, says Muffy. And such, they're so expensive. This is your best chance to own one. What's, what's the bad then? Francine asked. Muffy for their arms. It's simple. I'll bet you can be nice for, an, for one and two weeks. Me? Nice? Francine started to laugh. That's a circle bet. I couldn't do I could do that that in my sleep. I'm sure you can, says Muffy, but this is hard harder because you have to do it while you you're awake. Oh, and one other thing. Aha, says Francine. Here comes the smile point. Not really, says Muffy. It just it's just that you can can't tell anyone if you did. They might try to help you. Francine waved her arms. That's no big deal. I'm so nice that anyway. They they wouldn't even notice the difference. Well we'll see, says Muffy. We'll see. Chapter three. The next morning, the kids arrived at school in a rush, filling the halls like ants scurrying into an entrance. Usually, Arthur had the feeling of being crushed in a crowd, but today he welcomed the comfrag. Comfrag. He tried to move as fast as possible. As the kids began to spin, spinners, Arthur reached his locker. Wow, says Buster, stopping in front of him. I like the fashion police. He circled around order slowly. Okay, fast up. Where did you get the rear chair? Arthur looked down and sighed. He had been hoping to stay, stay the sweater in his locker because, before anyone got a look. But he hadn't been, been the, that lucky. The sweater was one of the kind. It was covered with bright slices of the orange, green, and purple with Christ rose the front and the back like tire, tire track. Buster took a closer look. I've seen car accidents that look, look better than this, he says. Arthur shuddles, shuddles. My Aunt Bonnie got it for me. It was handmade, she says, or over, over many months by work. Who kept their eyes shut, says Buster. Maybe, says, friend, says Arthur, but my, fr my other one is dirty, so my mom dragged this, uh, this out of the closet. Buster looked over Arthur's shoulder. Oh, uh, you'd better get it off fast. Here's come Francine. 
you cease in this eye stores, you never heard the end of it. But, but it was already too late. Francine's face had broken into a, a wide grin. Arthur, that's where it. She looked up to see Muffy hold out her arm and glance at her watch. You were saying, Francine? Muffy asked. Hmm, it's nice, Arthur. Very nice. And colorful. Arthur and Buster look stunned. Are you feeling all right, Francine? Asked Buster. Of course, says Francine. Then she quickly walked away. Later at later at the race, the kids were playing baseball. The game was a close one, and Francine team was up. Arthur and the brain was already at at first and third. Francine was a deck, and it was Buster turned at the plate. Ah, Buster says Francine, "Can I bet for you?" Why? asked Buster. Well, says Francine. This is a certainly situation. We have a chance to take the lead. So her voice tired of the snowed Muffy and spank her watch again. So what? Asked Buster. Hmm. So I just want to make sure you're up for the challenge. It's big moment. You look big moment. You look a little tired. Do you feel okay? Yeah, I'm fine," says Buster in the pink, fit and a、uh, fit as a fiddle. Now, if you excuse me, he headed for the plate. Good, glad to glad to hear it. Francine called after him. Now go get him. Arthur and the brain exchanged exchanged surp- surprised looks. I never expected to see Francine turn down the chains to speak her mind," says the brain, "and that's twice in on in on one that one day," added Arthur. They look at each other and scratch their heads. Soon, clearly, the whole was full of surprise. Chapter four. If either. Fr- If either Arthur or the brains thought that the mystery surrounding Francine's behavior was clear or quickly, they were wrong. In fact, the mystery only grew with each passing day. The next included Oakwood. Over the week, Arthur, Buster, and Sir Allen were playing in the park when the brain come come running up to them. Follow me," he says, huffing and puffing. "You have to see this." They went back to the school's playground. "Take a look around the corner of the building," says the brain. "Just your hands, dot, to make sure you're not seen." Arthur, Br- Arthur, Buster, and Sally did what did what he says. "I can't believe it," says Arthur. "Amazing," added Buster. "Something to tell my grandchild, grandchildren." So Allen did this. They watched silently as Francine and Muffy practicing street hockey. That that in itself was not usually, but the excellent as confused were far from normally. Francine was disappointedly learning how to change the discord with the puck. She glided up and down, keeping her stick in front of her. Front of her and knocking the puck back and front. Okay, she told Muffy. Now you try it. Muffy tried her best, but she couldn't hold hold the turn. The puck went skidding away, and she caught Red Francine, knocking her down. Muffy, can you do anything? Francine stopped herself. Wrong. That was almost perfect. I'm glad you're talking this so well," says Fr- says Muffy. But I need to tell you," she pointed at Francine's neck. Francine looked down. There were there was a new hole in her pants at the knee. My good pants," she gasped. "Sorry," says Muffy. "It was an accident. Am am I still invited over for dinner?" Francine slowly dipped. Yes, sis. As Francine don't let repose pants came between them, must be stared to leave. And Francine began kicking the break break wall. Being nice was harder than she had explained. She stopped Albert Place when the Muffy turned around. So Francine and pointed to her watch. I'll see you at five thirty, she says. 
I'll be waiting," says Betsy. "You know," Muffy added. "There are four days, nine hours, and twenty-seven minutes left. Once wants to call the backup." Francine shook her head. "Don't worry about me. Just take good care of my watch." Arthur and the other kids turned away. They couldn't hear. Hear everything Francine and Muffy had said, but they had heard enough. Weird," said Buster. "Extremely weird," said the brain added. "Francine just hasn't been herself lately," says Arthur. "Has anybody else noticed?" Everyone nodded. "Definitely," says the brain. "See, actually replacing my football, the one she threw down the floor the last week. Well, listen to this." Says Sir Ellen. She came to my house early yesterday morning with with a carton of the orange juice. She says it was to re- replace the aggressive drink last summer without asking. I said it before, says Buster, and I'll say it again. We're 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 we're. Nobody can agree with them. Chapter five. This is delicious," said Francine, eating another spoonful. The French kids were having dinner, Mister and Misters. French kids sat at opposite end of the table. Francine and her sister Catherine sat between them. Muffy was there too, sitting next to Francine as her guest. What? What is it exactly? Exactly, this you find delicious," Central asked. Catherine asked. Oh, says Francie, the cream and corn, the the stew. I thought you hated cream corn, says Central. Francie tired, tired, tried to smile. Really, I don't remember that. People change, Muffy says brightly. Happens all the time. Central look, Catherine look around. Not, not in this family. This. Catherine, in fact, in fancy, says Mister Franskit, trying to change the subject. He, he was staring at the paper napkin, which Muffy has rolled into into the shape of a swan. Oliver says, Mister Franskit, your napkin blowing on your lap. I know, I know, says her husband. But Muffy didn't did such a great job following them. I want to admit mine. I can I can do that if the, if it's hiding under the table. Well, there's some stones still on your chain, says Mister Franklin. Why don't you use your swans to clean it up when the middle meal is that ended, Mister Franklin? Kids start to clear the dish from the table. Muffy cleared her throat and raised an eyebrow at Francine. Father, Francine says suddenly, suddenly, "Let me go get stuff for you." Francine, Mister Francine, frozen in shock. What? Who says that? I did, says Francine. Mister Francine, frozen. You look like my daughter, Francine. He says, and your voice is smaller, but. Are you trying to discourage me, Francine? Asked. Her father rubbed his chin. Chin, chin. I see your point. Well, carry on and keep up the good work, Francine. Smiled and filled her arms with dish. Then she carried them into the kitchen. Catherine followed her. So what's the deal here? She asked. Deal, says Francine. What deal? This is this is sudden change, this transformment. Francine Shiller, I don't know what you mean. She says, being to load the dishwasher. You're being so helpful, helpful, so compliant. It's out of shadow. Francis nodded. You don't know me as well as you think. I'm just trying to be a good host. Catherine laughed. Really? Where bef- well, well, before you start changing your methods, you might consider to work working on your wardrobe. I mean, you're wearing ripped pants. So what? Says Francine. For your information, your clothes. 
Just then, Muffy came in, following another slump. Your father asked me to make him a whole, a whole little family. She explained. Then she looked at Francine. Sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. Francine took a deep breath. What I was saying, Castle, was that you're close. Er,、uh, great. In fact, I wish I had more like them myself. Maybe you can take my shop. Shopping sometimes. Catherine looked shocked. Finally, she dissented. You display some taste and good taste. I wouldn't have thought it possibly. Maybe they're hot for you yet. Well, go next weekend. Francis smiled until Catherine walked out, walking out. Then she clenched her fists. Francine was stopped, but. Even she wasn't sure how much more of this this she couldn't take.